take a map. Hey guys, and welcome back to Lost Bits, the series where we explore the unused, altered, and unseen content in gaming. Over the past few weeks since its release, Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach has provided us numerous glitches and a hilariously quick speedrun. But here, we'll take a look at just how much unused content this game has to offer. Now, just based on the state of how this game was released and hearing about some turmoil during development, I'm willing to bet there's quite a bit left unused here, especially given the game's 80 gigabyte size. Hey, uh, Tetrabit Gaming from the future here. There's actually a lot to cover. So much so that I'll be splitting this video into at least two parts. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe with bell notifications on to be notified as soon as part two goes up. Anyways, with all that said, smash that like button, let's head on down to the Pizzaplex and find some lost bits. Alright, so like I mentioned, this will be at least a two-parter, and for this video I wanted to primarily focus on some pre-release changes as well as the various unused maps and areas that are left over in the game. And I'll save the unused graphics, audio, and other stuff for later. So first off, before we get to the main game itself, let's take a look at a few things that were seen in trailers leading up to the game's launch that didn't make it into the final release. I've seen a few comments in my prior videos that said quite a few things were changed, so let's take a look. Firstly, seen in the teaser trailer from September of 2020, we see a shot of the kitchen area, and in the top, Moondrop can be seen lurking around. In the final game, Moondrop doesn't ever appear here. This first trailer also features dialogue that is never heard in the final cut, as well as a jump scare from Vanny that looks quite different from the one that's seen in the final release. I've seen a few people comment on the differences here, and I gotta agree, the original trailer one is certainly scarier with the rather frightening scream, but the one that is used in the final release does seem to fit Vanny's character more, as it almost seems more playful. And lastly, at the start of this trailer, there's a shot of a large area filled with what appears to be silos. This area kind of looks like this one with a bunch of silos or vats seen near the loading docks area, but it's in a different spot and it looks like it actually would have appeared right here behind this wall. Even after zipping the camera through this wall, it looks like there's absolutely no trace of this room left though. Now they may not be the same, but these silos also appear similar to these ones seen in an unused model viewing room that's left in the game. We'll come back to this unused room later again in this video, but to me it seems like this could have been at least a similar room. A large open area with numerous silos? Checks out. Anyways, on to the next pre-release trailer, we got the NVIDIA GeForce RTX reveal trailer for the game from January of 2021. The first notable difference in this trailer is seen in this shot here. It appears that at an earlier point in development of this game, the El Chips Mexican restaurant area was directly connected to the Rockstar Arcade area instead of the two areas being connected by a hallway with double doors. Apart from this, the areas both look to be pretty much the same, right down to the air hockey tables here, but in the final there's just a big old door separating the two areas now. Now I assume this change was made in order to create a loading area between the two rooms instead of just having the entire area loaded in together at once, which I guess may have proved to be too computationally demanding on some hardware. Additionally in this shot, we can see a sombrero clad staff bot delivering some pizza. Now this sombrero staff bot actually got completely scrapped from the game, and all we see in El Chips instead is just a regular old janitor bot. I definitely think that the sombrero bot would have been a nice touch to the theming of the restaurant here. Anyways, the next shot in this trailer shows off Bonnie's bowling area, and here once again we see what looks to be an earlier version of this area, as regular staff bots can be seen standing behind the counter, instead of this type that's seen in the final version, and here we can also see some doors in the back here that were changed for the final release. And lastly, for the pre-release trailers, we got the PlayStation gameplay trailer from February of 2021. Things that don't happen in the final version include Vanny being seen in this room, this scene of seeing Vanessa outside the elevator, and finally, and probably the coolest thing here, we can see a completely different UI for the Fazwatch. Instead of the game switching to a different full screen view as it does in the final, at this point in development, the player would just directly look at the screen on the model of the Fazwatch itself. And not only that, but the layout of the screen is also quite different. The font is different, missions was once inventory, messages used to be called logs I guess, 
The flashlight battery meter was moved to a bottom section here, which also has a meter for Freddy's battery level, what I assume was probably the player's current security clearance level, as well as what looks to be the number of party passes that Gregory has. Here, it appears that he would have two at the same time, something that isn't possible in the final game, as you can only get the second party pass well after having to use the first one to progress in the game's story. Honestly, I gotta say, I like this UI for the Faz Watch way more. Sure, the camera screen might not be as big, but it just looks so much cleaner. It's nice to have the inventory here instead of having to go to the pause menu for some reason. And hey, it actually tells you the time. That's kind of a nice watch feature, don't you think? And now, moving on to the second part of this video, let's switch gears and talk about some unused maps that go left over in this game. And thankfully for us, Security Breach actually has a lot of these with a whole bunch of stuff for us to talk about, so let's dive on in. First, let's talk about an unused room that I covered in a short not too long ago, and this is of course the unused character gallery room. As the name of this map suggests, this is indeed a character gallery, and here, by following the instructions on the floor, you can cycle between models of various characters in the game, including the four main animatronics, Vanny, Burntrap, which lets us get a nice close look at all the human remnants of him, if that's what we want to call this. And here we can also see some models that don't normally go used in the game, such as this frozen Glamendo, which I guess is only partially seen in the first lockdown office area in this here box, as well as this unused yellow crash test looking staff bot. We'll talk a bit more about these unused models in the next video. Then, in addition to all of these character models, here you can also switch to viewing, I assume, basically every arcade cabinet that appears in the Pizzaplex. This includes absolute classics like Milk Spoiled, Milk 2 Sour, and of course, Melon Felons. Can't forget Melon Felons. Then if we look around here, we can see that this gallery is found in what appears to be an area similar to that seen near the loading docks. And like I mentioned earlier, these do seem similar to the other ones seen in the game, only flipped upside down here for some reason. It's kind of an ominous looking area overall. Anyways, although it would be nice if there were even more models to view here from the game, it's still really cool to be able to view and inspect all of these characters and arcade machines up close and from a bunch of different angles. Next up we got Hive Room, and this is a small two-floor arcade area following the Hive motif from the file name as it features honeycomb-like patterns on the wall, as well as some really nice lighting. Now there aren't any B animatronics in this series, at least that I can remember, and since many of the other areas are themed after an animatronic, who knows, maybe at one point a B was considered to join the series. Then moving on, next we got a few maps left in the game that appear to be early versions of existing maps that were used in the pre-release trailers that we went over earlier. The first of these is Map East Arcade Restaurant, and no, I didn't make the spelling mistake with restaurant there, as this is actually how the developers spelled it. Anyways, this map actually features the original layout of both L Chips as well as the adjacent arcade like we saw in the trailer. There's like three different ways that connect the two areas, and honestly, it's just so much better. It makes more sense, it looks better, and yeah, it just seems like a lot more of a realistic way of connecting the two areas compared to a closed off corridor. I guess I get why they might have had to make this change from a technical standpoint, but it's really too bad. This looks infinitely better, I think. Furthermore here, the actual arcade seems to have a different layout too. Now, although I didn't go over each arcade cluster and see if they're the same, I noticed that this early version lacks this little seating area here, and it looks like at this point in development, the vent section here wasn't implemented, nor was the security office area to which it leads. The next area that was seemingly seen in a trailer but has been scrapped is Map Kitchen Large Vat Room, and this appears to be the room that was seen in this shot here. Although there's no proper or fancy lighting like we saw in the trailer, here we can see a bit more of this room, and yeah, basically as the name implies, it's a room with some large vats of god only knows what. Pizza sauce? It's still unclear what this large area would have been for, but regardless, still cool to see it kicking around. Then similarly, there's an early version of this office room known as Map Vat Room. This is that one office room that's connected to the other VAT room that is used, but the updated version is connected to it rather than being its own map like this. 
Although it's mostly the same, the new one does have a few small changes, including the carpet being changed to blue from pink and also flipped around. The TV on the wall has a different animation playing, as do the computer monitors. The used version got rid of the whiteboard for whatever reason. The boxes look more disorganized, there's more junk all over the place here, some laptops were removed, some Chica posters were added, this Roxy picture was seemingly moved into this box, and the biggest change of all, this Freddy garbage can was opened. Unbelievable. And the last early version of a map that was seen in trailers that I could find was Map Bowling Alley Test. And here we can see the original layout with the regular staff bots behind the counters, as well as the alternate doors in the background. Other changes here include a lack of the backroom areas behind the counter where you find the Monty Mix, there's no stage found here at all, and on the other side of the area we can see that at this stage in development there was actually windows here in Bonnie Bowl where guests could actually look down onto Roxy's Raceway. Honestly, this would have been awesome if it was left in. Just like with the El Chip stuff, it would have further visually connected the different areas in the Pizzaplex and just made it seem more realistic. And also, just like with El Chips, I can only assume that this change was made since having all of Roxy's Raceway loaded in might have proved to be a bit too demanding. I don't know, I just think these windows would have been so cool. And furthermore, this also appears to be an earlier version of Roxy's Raceway down here, as some changes can be noted, such as the garage bays haven't been developed yet, and the cart with a staff bot that's used in the story isn't seen here yet either. Other than that though, the area seems pretty much intact. Anyways, next up from this bowling map, probably the best thing here, remnants from a scrapped bowling minigame can also be found. One of the lanes in here has a bowling ball in front of it, sporting a nice default Unreal texture, and at the same lane a large button or cube can be found on the console. After interacting with it, a bowling minigame will load, and basically you just move where and at what angle you want to throw the ball from, and then you move the mouse up to throw the ball, and then you can sort of control it both left and right by moving the mouse accordingly. This bowling minigame has a whole scoring system programmed with some UI graphics for keeping score as well, albeit very basic looking. And there were also otherwise unseen screens for various bowling outcomes, such as getting a gutter ball, split, spare, and strike. Although still basic, it seems like a decent amount of work was put into this little minigame. I guess the developers just weren't able to finish it up for release. Hopefully we do see it added into the game in a future update, because I think it's a cool touch to this area. And last up for the bowling area, if we move behind the lanes here, we can see some hidden developer text that was left in. Simply leaving a reminder to, I quote, add bowling alley behind the scene stuff. I guess there were once plans to add more stuff behind the lanes here, but looks like that never came to be. That said, behind this wall there's this unused door that's probably a remnant from back when there was supposed to be something back here. Next up we got two normally unused utility areas. And the first of these is actually partly still found in the final version of the Pizzaplex. In this area that you have to use Monty's claws to get into to get this present, there's actually a hidden hallway just behind this here wall. Now the final map just leads you up to these stairs here, but if we look at the original version of this area in the map Utility Southeast Corner, there's actually a bit more to this. At the end of this corridor is a split path that lets you go to an upper or lower segment of what appears to be a storage area for some go-karts. Also further in this area is another smaller storage room with what looks like replacement go-kart parts, so perhaps this was a go-kart repair station or something. There's also Freddy and Flashlight charging spots here, so this area seems a bit further along than some of the other scrapped places we've seen so far. Then at the end here is a staircase that would offer another exit, but since it abruptly ends, I'm not exactly sure where this was intended to lead. But with all the go-kart stuff here, I'd be willing to bet it would probably lead to Roxy's Raceway. Then next, the second unused utility area here is titled Map Utility East, and based on this signage, this appears to have been a once planned shortcut between Gator Golf and the daycare area. There's not too much to this map, there are a few endos, only one of which appears to be active, and yeah, it's just your average utility area. Now if you remember, there's actually a door near the lobby to Gator Golf that requires level 10 security clearance. 
And since currently you can't ever get level 10 security clearance, you can never normally enter this door. But if we force the camera through the door here, we can actually see the same signs that are seen in the utility passage, basically confirming that this would have served as one of the entrances to this shortcut. Now there were apparently planned to be several other utility shortcuts like this that would have let you cross between different areas of the Pizzaplex faster. And as we've seen, many of them have been covered up or blocked off by doors that you can't normally bypass. These seem like they would have been pretty handy for getting around. It's too bad they weren't implemented. Alright, moving on, next up are several areas that were seemingly removed around the Rockstar Row area that you start the game in. First and foremost here is a massive backstage area that was completely dropped. This large area contains various props and such thrown all over the place, a double set of curtains, stage lights, a long catwalk higher up here, it's just such a large area, and it's honestly hard to believe it was simply Thanos snapped out of existence. It must have been a bit later on in development too, as a save point was implemented. In fact, you can actually see this room in the final cut of the game, as this is the area that you see in the texture on the windows in the backstage office. The render of the area used in this screenshot appears to be from a bit later in development though, as although it's almost the same, some changes can be noted such as these stairs aren't seen in this version. There also seems to be a few different ways that the player could have entered this area. There are some lower doors here, in this side room it looks like there was going to be another overhead door as on the other side of this wall we can see markings to support this. Then on the other side in this other side room, just behind the wall is a vent that Gregory was meant to unscrew. And judging by the save point being here, I'd guess that this is the way that you'd get into the backstage area for the first time. It's currently unclear what purpose exactly this area was planned to serve in the game, but just judging at how large and relatively complete it is, I'd reckon it would have been something pretty neat. And the funny thing is, this isn't the only scrapped area here either, as there are two more large rooms that were meant to be seen in the southeast corner of this section of the Pizzaplex. Just behind the wall in this warehouse room are two sets of level 4 security doors that would have led to a large kitchen area. The kitchen area is similar to the one that's seen with the whole pizza bot segment, but it's definitely different. Interestingly enough, these level 4 doors here are actually still hidden out of bounds in the final version of the map that's used. Additionally to these doors, there also would have been an alternate vent that could have been used to gain access inside, and it can even be seen protruding in the wall here. This however was completely removed from the final version. Anyways, this kitchen would have actually led to another area here, and this is known as the VIP room. Here there's a giant TV, several speakers, a bar, a dance floor, as well as a fully finished bathroom. Now most places for kids don't have a bar or a dance floor like this, so as the name implies, this might have been for some VIP adults or something, as this room, minus the bathrooms of course, certainly seems less aimed towards kids compared to any other area that would be accessible to the public in the Pizzaplex. In the final cut of the game, another VIP room is referenced when you try to get to this area here, but this one doesn't seem to be related. Additionally, amongst several others that we'll cover in the next video, there's one unused staff bot voice line that references a VIP room as well. Halt! VIP members only. Now some have speculated that this scrapped line might have been related to this room, and some unknown conditions would have had to be met in order to gain access as a VIP. All three of these unused areas seem to have been removed later in the game's development, and I think they would have made this part of the Pizzaplex a lot more meaningful. This picture in this tweet by Maz here really puts into perspective just how big of a chunk was scrapped from this area. It's certainly non-negligible. Next, I mentioned the hidden developer text in the bowling alley test map, but there are actually several other instances of this that can be found in other unused maps. In an old version of the laundry rooms, text can be seen here referencing a locked fence gate. I assume this means there was once a plan to add a locked gate here, probably one of the ones that requires Monty's claws or Chica's voice box to open. Then very close to this is a door with more text here mentioning that it requires staff bot. 
Now, some have speculated that this might have been for a scrapped segment where you would have had to take control of another staff bot, similar to the pizza bot segment, in order to open this door. But I think it's more likely that this is just a note by the developers to remind them that they need to add a staff bot in this room, since in the final version of this area, a staff bot is seen behind this door. Next up, in an early version of the loading dock hallway, the text electrical box can be seen hovering here above what I assume is an electrical box. It's unclear why exactly this text is here though. Next, found in Map East Arcade back wall, here is some more developer text floating above that says door here. And this was likely a reminder for the developers to add a door here, but it seems that no door was ever added. And lastly here, while we're talking about the hidden dev text, although not exactly the same, in the final version of the map, there's hidden text in the wall here spelling ATM. Now this ATM text is seen above several ATMs in the Pizzaplex, but for whatever reason with this one, the text is displaced just behind the wall here, leaving it hidden away from normal view. And last up for this video, similar to the unused bowling game we saw earlier, there are actually some more minigame things that go unused. Well, the first of these is I guess half unused, as although you can play the Gator Golf minigame in the final cut of Security Breach, only half of the developed holes are ever normally playable, as there are actually 9 that aren't seen in normal play for a total of 18 holes. Of the ones that aren't normally seen, first is hole number 4 here, and this would have had the player hitting the ball through a cutout in a spinning gear. Then next is hole 5, and this had a Phaser Blast themed hole, which has a large spinning maze-like section in the middle. Hole 6 here is one themed around Roxy's Raceway, it's pretty standard, but at the start, if you're able to hit the ball into the pipe right above Roxy's head, you'll get an instant hole in one, which is pretty sweet. The next unused hole is hole 12, and this is another Gator Golf themed one. Here there are two alligators that chomp down to stop the ball, and then the hole is up this ramp, so you have to hit the ball at the right strength in order to make it up the ramp, but also not too hard so you don't hit the wall and rebound back down. Then next is hole 13, which has a moat of sorts with a large mound in the middle with the hole. Then moving away from the gator theme for a bit, unused hole 4 would have been all about pizza pies, as several of them can be seen in the surroundings here. Honestly, they look good enough to eat. The actual layout is pretty cool here too, as the goal is to stay on the main path if you can, otherwise you'll drop down one of these gaps on the sides that leads to a lower area that will have you needing more strokes to finish here. Unused hole 15 takes us back to Gator Country, and here there's a ramp at the start, which if you hit the ball just right, you can get it into this pipe that will take the ball right into the hole. Then next is hole 16, and this appears to be the earliest hole of the bunch, as it's very basic and much of it is still actually untextured. It's basically a large pipe with some basic geometry blocking the way. Not much to say here, I can definitely see why this one wasn't added in, at least in the state that it's currently in. And the last unused hole for this minigame is hole number 17, and this appears to have been themed around the daycare play area. This is not an easy hole, as I found it pretty difficult to find the right power and angles necessary to not have the ball roll back out of bounds. With the exception of the one seemingly unfinished hole, it's kinda strange that basically half of the holes were scrapped, especially considering that they're basically finished, let alone still found in the game's files. I'm glad they did keep the cool throwback holes to past FNAF games, but still, some of these holes, especially the Phaser Blast and Roxy's Raceway ones, would have been an awesome fit too. And last, but certainly not least, is a minigame that was completely scrapped, and this one is called Chica's Feeding Frenzy. Here you take control of Chica, and the goal is simply to blast pizza slices at some very basic looking enemies and survive as many waves as possible. Destroying enemies makes them drop some coins, and every few waves, more and more difficult enemies will spawn, with a glowing boss-like enemy appearing every 5 rounds. At first I thought these numbers on the side might have hinted at a multiplayer mode for this game as well, but it turns out that this is actually an ammo counter for alternate blasters you can get in the game, such as a shotgun-like one or a super rapid fire one. I also moved the camera to get a closer look here, and not only are the enemies really basic spheres with like a nub, Chica herself looks pretty hilarious. Although certainly looking really basic, it's honestly a really fun little minigame. 
Like with the scrapped bowling minigame, some are speculating that the unused Gator Golf holes and Chica's feeding frenzy might get added in a future update, and that would be awesome. But let's hope it isn't in the form of paid DLC. If you've been around the channel for a while, you know unused areas are probably my favorite thing to cover. So yeah, guess you can say I'm pretty happy with all the stuff we still got to see left over in the files. But on the flip side, it kind of bums me out that some of these things didn't make it into the final cut, at least not yet, especially given the state that they're still found left in the files. Anyways, on that note, we'll wrap up this first part here, and if you enjoyed this, look forward to the follow-up video where I'll be covering a whole bunch more unused content in the game, including unused graphics, voice lines, an unused survival mode, and more. Again, make sure you're subbed to find your way back for that, and as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in a bit. <laughs>